It's literally a trend to be sad and depressed. You're not depressed, you're just lazy. Huh? Depression is not real. You can be sad, but choosing to be sad for a long period of time is your own decision. It's your fault, yeah. You what? There's a lot of people on TikTok who fake all kinds of mental disorders and diseases for clout. Depression is not real. What? Feeling you depressed. are not depressed. Is real. Stop saying mm -hmm. that. So oh, you, can feel, you can feel I'm depressed. You can mad already. But but you feel depressed. Alright, what the f- why is mental illness so misunderstood? One in eight people globally have some form of mental health condition. Yet studies show 60% of people with a clinical mental illness do not seek treatment, largely in part due to the stigma surrounding mental health issues. Which unfortunately checks out considering one in four Americans surveyed don't believe that depression is a form of mental illness at all. Where does this stigma actually come from? And why do people downplay something an eighth of the world experiences every day? And I have two theories, starting with Number one. Stigma, a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or person. And unfortunately, mental disorders are some of the most stigmatized, even in today's society. If you have ADHD, you may have been told, that's not a real disorder, you're faking it. People with bipolar disorder may have been told, you're too aggressive and violent. Stop being crazy. People who claim to have anxiety are just weak and they only think about themselves. And probably the most popular one, depression people aren't actually depressed they're just lazy and hiding behind mental health as an excuse these are the same people who will see you having an episode look you dead in the eyes with the straightest face not an ounce of irony in their system and say oh you're depressed have you tried cheering up there are only a few things more annoying when you're in a low emotional state than to have someone who's never experienced what you're going through undermine your experience with a half-baked quote-unquote positive response. How could you be depressed? There's so much to be happy about. You have too much to be grateful for in life to be depressed. It's almost as if they're saying, yeah, I get that you're sad, but there's no way it's that bad, as if they're just dismissing the actual issue at hand. Why is it so easy for us to judge others with a mental illness and assume they're either faking it or using it as an excuse because the experience is unfathomable to others who's never experienced a true mental health disorder before this problem has existed since the dawn of time the reason why a physical injury or disability is taken more seriously in society's eyes for example if you broke your leg is that even as an outsider looking in what you see the other person is going through is obvious even if you've never broken your leg before your brain can more easily empathize with that person because you can visually see where the pain is coming from versus a mental illness where the source of pain and ailment is not clear to an outsider looking in. And since it's not obvious where their pain is coming from, as an attempt to empathize, your brain may try to recall an experience from your past that you perceive to be similar to theirs. The problem is, if you've never had a mental illness before, and let's say you're trying to relate to a person with depression, the only experience your brain can attach itself to are moments where you've been sad in the past. But simply being sad or having quote unquote depressive moods moods due to response to something is not the same as having clinical major depressive disorder. The disconnect lies in the fact that every human knows what it's like to be sad, but only those with clinical depression knows what it's like to be sad for a very, very, very long time. And the worst part is sometimes you don't even know why you're feeling this way. So it's easy to assume, oh, I've been sad before and I got out of it just fine. Why are you having so much trouble with it? You must be weak. So no, people with ADHD aren't faking it. People with bipolar Polar disorder aren't crazy, anxiety isn't self-centeredness, and depression is not laziness or just being sad. However, if you've never experienced any of these, your perception may automatically give you that assumption. You chose to be depressed for a long period of time. You could be sad for a day, two days, three days. If something really bad happened, a week. But if you let it go past a week, that is your fault. Stigma doesn't just come from those who've never experienced a mental disorder, but those who have experienced it, thankfully got better, but assume what worked for them should work for everyone else, while simultaneously forgetting what it was like for them while they were going through that same hardship. This mentality may discourage others who see videos online of people giving advice on how to treat their mental illness, but if that specific technique doesn't work for them, they may feel even more like an outsider and wonder why they are the exception if it worked for everybody else. I would
would argue that this may also be a form of survivorship bias. Survivorship bias occurs when you only consider the few stories of people who've done something and became successful, but ignore the thousands of people who've done the exact same thing and failed. But you confuse that small percent as the entire group. But Tyreek! What's the difference between sadness and clinical depression? <laughs> then I'm glad you asked! The difference between clinical depression versus being sad or having a depressive mood is the length of time the mood lasts and how severely it can disrupt your day-to-day -day life. Sadness is a basic human emotion that usually stems from a stressful or somber event, and although painful, people can usually find relief from crying, venting, or getting your frustrations out somehow, and sadness usually passes as a result of time. However, by definition, clinical depression occurs when any five of these symptoms on screen occurs for at least two weeks. And as you can see, sadness is only one of the symptoms of a major depressive disorder. The simplest explanation? If you're experiencing sadness as a result of something, usually you could still operate your day-to-day -day life as normal. Someone with major depressive disorder typically loses all interest in continuing normal life, because in their mind, it doesn't matter. And in most cases, they don't know why they feel that way. So to believe people are somehow choosing to be sad over a long time for no reason is a wild take and proves not everyone needs a microphone. There are two opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to advice on treating mental illnesses such as depression. One side is to rely heavily on therapy, doctors, and medication, and that helps some people. And the other is to say, screw it, I'm going to exercise, change my diet, change my environment, and get out of this through sheer willpower, and that helps some people, or a mixture of the two. But the one thing we can all agree on, there is no absolute cure for depression that works for every single Single person. The brain is so complex, what helped one person through a mental illness may not help the next person, even if they did the exact same thing. Well, at least the one thing that science does prove is that depression is actually caused by a chemical imbalance of the brain. <laughs> Sorry guys, my phone is ringing. While I'm recording too, how embarrassing. I apologize, let me just pick it up real quick. Hello? Wait, what do you mean that's incorrect? Wait, what do you mean that in recent years science has given up on the idea that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance and that it's more so correlation than it is causation? Wait, what do you mean that after decades of research, people still don't have any earthly idea on what mental illness is or how it operates in the brain? Has anyone throughout history known how to treat a mental illness? That's where I welcome you to my favorite segment, history of people not knowing what the to do about mental illness because they were scared of it or something, I don't know. 15th century Europe. At this time, the Catholic Church gained all authority over medicine. The bubonic plague, endless war, unfathomable drip were all things Europe had to face during this time. And needless to say, times were rough. And instead of trying to find the real root cause of all these problems and, you know, take responsibility, Pope Innocent VIII had the brilliant idea to declare all the country's problems were because of possessed people and literally caused a witch hunt that lasted about 300 years. Their criteria for people they considered possessed was literally anyone that was not normal to society and surprise surprise that included a lot of people that were mentally ill. So yeah, stigma. Or how about we go back a couple thousand years to ancient Greece and take a look at a practice they called trepanation where and I quote, they drill a hole in the side of a person's skull to release the evil spirits from the heads of mentally ill people. What? Another case of mental illness being demonized. Mental asylums. Asylums were popularized during the 1700s, and you'd probably think, wow, a specific place designed to treat the mentally ill? That seems like a step up from skull drilling? Nah. They should have changed the name from mental health asylum to mental health isolation because the true purpose was to take all the mentally ill people and separate them from society so the general public didn't have to see them. At that time, literally everyone believed that mentally ill people were too dangerous to even be around their own families. You know, cold plunges? The thing athletes do to help with muscles and whatnot? They had the same treatment in asylums too and called it the bath of surprise where they come here sedate patients by dumping them in ice cold water without worrying anywhere from several hours to several days 
What? And the list goes on and on. For example, in the 1800s, patients who experienced a nervous breakdown were literally put in straight jackets and locked in a cage. In the 1900s, they used lobotomy and they legitimately thought that the cure for depression, schizophrenia, and personality disorder was to take a sharp object stick it in your brain to sever the neural connections shockingly they ended that practice a couple years ago speaking of shocking electroshock therapy was used in the 1900s to induce seizures because they believed giving someone a seizure would relieve them of a mental illness point is throughout history we never knew how to treat mental illness on a mass scale and because we had no idea what it was the mentally ill were demonized because they were different today's world has seen the most advancement when it comes to mental health and the public perception of people with mental health disorders the problem is even with our technology Technological advancement in the medical field, we still don't have a concrete view on what mental illness actually is or how to treat it because there is no one size fits all solution for everyone. But what we do know is people need help and all stigma does is deter people from seeking that help. So let's not undermine the experience of millions of people just because it may be foreign to us. And please, let's stop assuming people with mental illnesses are faking it. But what about the people who are? <laughs> Faking disorders. There's a lot of people on TikTok who fake all kinds of mental disorders and diseases for clout. By far the biggest target for these fake disorders is Tourette's. It began to raise suspicions about whether or not this specific TikToker actually had Tourette's syndrome after noticing that her apparent condition felt forced or fake. When these suspicions were eventually confirmed to be true, Ticks and Roses was exposed brutally. Send me to Canada! All right, so the first thing I notice is, yeah, this this does scream very fake. Um, if this were happening to me and like I were having such severe tics while trying to package something, I would not be happy like she is. Ain't TikTok a wonderful place? Disclaimer, I will only be referring to people already proven or admitted to be faking. These are very few instances that do not represent the majority of people who claim to have a mental disorder and does not justify automatically assuming others are faking it too. Thanks, back to the video. Public perception of mental health awareness has drastically improved in this century. I think anything's a step above brain drilling. More than ever, people are understanding the importance of doing something to treat your mental health. Therapy went from something where you only go to therapy because you're weird and there's something wrong with you to nah, everyone and their mothers need to go to therapy. Which, overall, is a net positive for people who would have otherwise been too afraid to seek treatment out of the fear of ridicule. But like in Instagram comment section, there's always that one person to screw up a good vibe. Years ago, a few TikTokers were exposed for faking mental disorders for clout. They would post videos of themselves basically pretending to have Tourette's, Dissociative Identity Disorder, Bipolar Disorder, amongst others. For what reason, you may ask? Views, I guess, I don't know. Anyone with a working conscience already knows how disgusting this practice is, and it takes a certain type of person to stoop this low for attention. But outside of the obviously bad, how does this actually affect public perception of mental health issues? Well, number one, it adds fuel to the fire for the people who already believe mental illness is fake or an excuse, which again is a false belief, but it is kind of annoying to think that they now have something to feed their confirmation bias with. And number two, more importantly, it may lead to people concluding a false self-diagnosis. There is a certain subsection on social media where people would post the most basic human experience and blame that behavior on a type of mental disorder. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Wow, what a completely unique experience no one else can relate to. Clearly, 
I must have had ADHD this entire time. People who don't know much better may look at these posts and legitimately believe they have symptoms of an actual mental disorder, which can obviously lead to a false self-diagnosis and can also lead people to either A, seeking unnecessary treatment, B, seeking the wrong treatment, maybe they did have another disorder, but that's being overlooked by the one that they claim to have, or C, just overall being annoying to people who actually have those disorders. The only good that can come out of these videos realistically is if it sparks curiosity and people get motivated to actually get tested for any disorders they could potentially have. But if they don't, they'll rely on this TikTok self-diagnosis, and they may blame their mistakes or minor inconveniences on something that isn't there and could fairly easily lead to romanticization. Romanticization of mental health disorders have already existed for a while, which is unfortunate considering it came from an overall net positive thing. Representation of real mental health disorders in media, such as TV shows and movies, are helpful in destigmatizing mental illness because it gives people with those disorders something they can relate to so they don't feel like a complete outsider, while simultaneously giving the general public the reality that mental illness is more common than we realize and it should not be demonized. However, it becomes a problem when it goes from something the public should be aware of to something the public desires. I love my mental illness. Me too. My <laughs> mental illness literally makes me me. Um. He do be what? Ma'am, this is Ted Bundy. Do you know who he is? Stop it. Get some help. I get that some of these posts are hopefully meant to be ironic, but I can't help but wonder how someone who's actually fighting a battle in their own mind every day would feel knowing there's a subsection of people on social media who are either flaunting mental illness around for views or treating it like it's a quirky personality trait. It's like there's this dichotomy of mental health awareness in media. On the one hand, there are people posting things as a means to cope and to find community among others who feel the same way. And the other hand, there are people who glorify it as if having a mental illness is a goal to be acquired. This confusion can diminish the severity of how serious mental health disorders should be taken. And if not kept in check, would only lead to more stigma. But hey, compared to 100 years ago, we've only seen improvement. And the way I see it, we can only go up from here. Right? Hi, how are you? So, well, here's the moment we've all been waiting for. Why I made this video in the first place. And like I said in the video, although we've advanced so much, there still is a lot that needs to be done. There is still a lot of people that stigmatize mental health disorders and make it just that much more harder for people who already suffer through it every single day. And ladies and gentlemen, I come to you as a humble man to admit that I used to be one of those people who stigmatized in case that wasn't clear. Because I'll just think they were exaggerating it a little bit because I just didn't understand. I got curious, researched this topic, realized how much of an idiot I was being, realized that just because I had no idea another person was going through doesn't give me the right to undermine their experience. Still have a lot to learn, and I hope if you're someone who was in my shoes who used to think the same way, I hope this video at least helped put you on the right path to unravel those biases and false beliefs. So. That being said, it's only right that I finish this video in the same state that I started it in. Oh yeah, you thought the video was done? Nah, we're still here, baby. I actually wonder who's still here. I mean, hey, if you're gonna stay here anyway, you may as well click on this recent video that I uploaded not too long ago. Uh, this could be my video that I did on why every generation hates the next one. By the way, you guys crushed it. Thank you so much for almost half a million views on this one. I love you guys. Or if you're watching this a year from now, it could just simply be my most recent upload. And if, if that's the case, regardless, I'm sure it's fire. Hit subscribe, huh? That's right over here. Click that button up on my feet here and uh, I don't know if we can hang out here for a couple more minutes. If, uh, I mean, if you want to, you know, like, you made it to the end. 
may as well just chatter. <laughs> Whatever. Bye, guys. Love you. Thanks for almost 10K. Thanks for thanks for 8K subscribers.